All right. Well, thank you for the introduction. Um, so first of all, I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about image recognition and how we apply that today to retail. So what is image recognition? Image recognition is a subset of probably a broader category, which is computer vision. So essentially what this means is that this is a technology that enables computers to perceive visual reality. So you're probably familiar with some of the common applications of this technology. So for example, there are highways today that are using cameras, which are image recognition enabled, to assess traffic conditions on a road. Or perhaps one of the more commonly used applications is something that you would all have on your smartphones or any digital camera. And that would be the feature when you're taking a picture of a group of people that puts a frame around somebody's face. So what this is, is what we would call simple recognition or detection. So what this means is, I know in this picture there's a face, or in our case, a bottle, but I don't know whose face it is, and I don't know, is this a man, is this a woman, an adult, or a child? And that's where we get into fine-grained image recognition. So this means being able to add that context and granularity to that information. Now, when we think of the example of facial recognition, every face in the world is unique, right? It's like a fingerprint. Um, when it comes to consumer packaged goods, that's not the case. Um, so many products could be virtually identical, barring one small detail. Um, they have identical branding, identical proportions. So for example, you could have a bottle of shampoo that's a 200 milliliter product, or a bottle that's a 400 milliliter product. Their proportions are identical. So geometrically, they have the same ratios. The branding is identical. So unless you're able to see this within a context that allowed you to understand the size of the product or read the fine print on the package that told you the size, it'd be very difficult, difficult to differentiate between these things if you were to see it in an image. So the technology that we've had to develop in this space has to overcome these challenges and be able to differentiate between these minute details and not only understand the specific product that we're looking at, but understand the context in which we're looking at. So to give you an il illustration of this, um, one of the things that we've had to overcome when we're looking at products that are spread out on a shelf is a product is often not faced the way that we would like it to be faced, right? It's not front facing, it's not standing up, it could be on its side. Um, so we've had to work very hard to overcome these challenges, but by doing so, we've been able to pick up these kind of minute details about how a product is displayed on a shelf. So to give you another example of uh, how we've used this, this is an image actually taken from a Coca-Cola cooler. You can see there's Coca-Cola product, product in it, a 450 ml decal on it. But if you actually look closely, three of the products on the shelf are 600 ml products. Now there's no visible branding that would indicate that. This was picked up by looking at the geometry of the products. And the reason that this is significant is because the market where this photograph was taken um, does not have a 600 ml product. So these are actually parallel imports that were brought into this marketplace. So the next section of the presentation, I'd like to tell you about a few things that we're doing with one of our main global partners for leveraging this technology, which is Coca-Cola. Um, so we'll start, first of all, with a short video, and then I'll go through some of the, the examples that we have for you today. Coca-Cola bottlers around the globe have been working with tracks to perfect their in-store execution with image recognition technology. White Execution Daily, also known as RED, is Coca-Cola's global commercial execution process developed to drive and improve the capability of their sales teams. With tracks, Coca-Cola has managed to improve the RED audit effectiveness in all retail channels. At Coca-Cola Korea, sales reps spent most of their time in store on tedious manual auditing activities, which resulted in limited reporting and results. With Trax's image recognition solution, each sales rep can now invest up to 60% more time in selling while maintaining the same level of audit costs. In some channels, Coca-Cola reinforces their sales efforts with telesales agents. Coca-Cola Amatil face the challenge of providing recommendations to customers based on dated in-store information and over-the-phone updates. With tracks integrated into their call center systems, CCA telesales agents have eyes into the store, 
with real-time data and store images, resulting in more effective sales calls and increased revenues. I can see that you guys are running three rows each of the Mountain Blast and the Berry Eye. So if you wanted to get the five of those, I can throw in a case of another flavor for free, see how that goes for you guys. In Japan, Coca-Cola faced the challenge of tracking and managing price alignment and promotional pricing for their own and competitor products. Having accurate data was important for us to make many decisions. With Tracks, we understood the weekly change of our position against competitors and how our plan was executed in the market. By linking Tracks's photo recognition data and our actual vending machine sales, we understand how consumers react to our brands. In Russia, Coca-Cola Hellenic partnered with an external auditing company that could only execute 30% of their store coverage with manual audit methods. This year with Trax, they will achieve 100% sales rep coverage across Russia in the same amount of time and costs. So as we've seen in the video, um, Coca-Cola has what they call the red process. And essentially the goal of this process is to take the high level strategy that we have and then turn that into something that we can implement in the marketplace. So first of all, it's about creating what is our picture of success? What does our ideal store look like? Then the second part of that is how do we execute it in the store? And then the third part is how do we track how we're executing it and see how we're performing against this plan that we've put in place? So when we think about what it takes to track this kind of execution, especially when we think about a company like Coca-Cola, which is available at almost every point of sale imaginable, um, there are two major challenges that we have. One is the time it would take to acquire this kind of information. Right? Imagine if you had to go into a supermarket and stand in a 10 meter long beverage aisle and start writing down all the different products that were available, how many facings you had of each product, where they're located, if they're planogrammed correctly, um, if they meet your merchandising standards. So this is a very time-consuming process. And obviously any time-consuming manual process often comes with a heavy cost associated with it. So what this means is that in the past we've been very limited in the amount of coverage that we could achieve to actually measure this information. So one of the main things that we've been able to do with image recognition is take that very time-consuming task and turn it into something as simple as just taking a picture. So as the saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words, all of that type of information can be extracted from this one point of information that we have, which is this image. Um, and that's really enabled us to take this tracking of the execution to the next level. So one of the examples that we've seen in the video of how we do this is by taking this information and integrating into a contact center, a call center. So one of the trends that we've seen in our space lately is that a lot of companies are moving towards engaging with their customers through either call centers or online applications which allow them to place orders for their outlets. Now the challenge that you have with this is that the person who's now interacting and managing the relationship with the customer is one step removed. So they're not in the store, they're not engaging directly with the customer on a personal level, so it becomes a very dry interaction. But what we've been able to do with this is provide these agents who are sitting on the phone talking to a customer with real insights from the store. So giving them a real-time understanding of how their category is behaving and what the opportunities that exist in the store are. So the third example that we also saw covered in the video was in Japan. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the Japan market, the vending channel is a very, very significant component of, uh, of retail in general, but in beverage in particular. So to give you an idea, in Japan, there are over one million Coca-Cola vending machines alone. So if you think about it, there are probably three or four other companies that each have a machine present for each Coca-Cola machine. So you can imagine the size and scale of this, uh, this challenge. Just to give you a point of uh, comparison, in Australia, Coca-Cola has below 5,000 vending machines. So you can see the contrast that's there. Now the interesting challenge that this creates is that you have an entire retail space, which is almost like, if you think about it, a supermarket in, let's say, a train station. Right? You could have 15 different vending machines that all have beverage product in it. So how do we understand and measure how this category is behaving in this particular space? And this is, again, where we've been able to limit to leverage image recognition to track and understand how this category, which is 
on the one hand, very cohesive, it's all inventing, it's all sold through the same type of interaction, but still very fragmented behaves. So this has enabled us to really track this kind of information and give them the ability to control and interact with their, with their consumers in a much more effective way. So what this comes down to is really being able to see what our consumers are seeing, the way that they're seeing it, and in real time. So looking at what our planograms, how our products are actually laid out on the shelf, how our presence is, so the availability of our products, and the positioning of our products. So is my product available at eye level? Is it merchandised on the lower shelf? Is it where I want it to be according to the merchandising standards? Are my promotions available? How many promotions do I have versus the other promotions that are available in the store? And of course, the pricing. So to make sure that my pricing is what I'd like it to be and that it's competitive within the space that I'm competing. But again, this also goes beyond just the executional part of it. And it takes, it takes it to the next level, which is strategy. It really enables us to understand how a category is behaving on a very granular level. So this isn't, to give you an idea, this isn't a data panel of a thousand stores that we're looking at. We actually visit every store, either weekly or monthly, within a universe. So the example that we saw in, uh, in Russia, we cover over 100,000 stores per month where this type of data is being generated. So we have this deep understanding of the category. We're able to then use that to discover the performance gaps that we have or perhaps opportunities that are available within this space. And then use that to optimize the plans that we're creating and the way that we're interacting with this marketplace um, to develop our category further, obviously. And what it really comes down to is being able to facilitate a better relationship with the customer, be able to provide them with more detailed information and added value from that point of view. So the next section is actually, this is the next thing that we're looking at, uh, how image recognition technology can be leveraged in this space. So we've talked about what this does for the manufacturers who we're working with. And the next area where we see this being applied is actually going to be in the, the retailer space and in the consumer space. So as I'm sure probably many of you know better than myself, um, online retail is a very prominent trend today. So it's growing very quickly, but we still see that bricks and mortar is a very relevant part of the retail space, um, with even big box online retailers such as Amazon opening bricks and mortar outlets themselves. So the question is, how do we bridge that gap that we have between online and these bricks and mortar spaces? So we've heard about a number of these, uh, these types of initiatives today, such as QR code scanners, eye beacons, and different technologies which are intended to engage the consumer with the shelf or with the, with the retail outlet. Now, there are, few, there are few obvious limitations with this, as we've also heard about infrastructure investment, the complexity that's involved in doing this. Um, the other limitation is really tying together the consumer's interaction with the shelf and the products that are actually present physically on the shelf in front of them. So this is where we see image recognition coming into play. So first of all, what we've been able to do with this is create a very easy solution that enables you to digitize a store. So instead of having to install physical infrastructure, or hardware, or anything like that, or have a very robust software back end which interacts with your inventory, what you can do is simply scan your category or your shelf or your store using image recognition and immediately create a digital outlet for any retail space. So one of the things that we've seen again with the previous examples is many of the players who are looking at this are the big box retailers. Um, so we have the tier one kind of retail outlets engaging in this. Where we're seeing a lower adoption rate is actually in the, in the lower tiers of these retailers, perhaps a more general trade um, or fragmented trade which can really leverage, leverage a technology like this, which doesn't require that same kind of heavy end um, inve upfront investment on their part. And by doing this, we can essentially create a new way of interacting with the shelf for the consumer. So immediately your, your store becomes digitally searchable and cus customers can interact with the shelf similar to the way that they would interact with an online store. So walk into a store, search for a particular product, apply different filters to it, um, and look at reviews and immediately be pointed to the location of this product on the shelf itself, which is all mapped out using uh, image recognition. 
So again, what this comes down to is being able to understand the path to purchase. So the way that we would look at this in an online space, how people are searching for a product, how they reach my particular product, trying to understand how this person reached the product on a shelf and how they're interacting with it. And again, tying in all these other things that we're working on, um, whether it's eye beacons or store-based location indicators, to the actual physical presence of a product on a shelf. So as we mentioned, this means leveraging or empowering the consumer to make more informed decisions at the store, while at the same time giving the retailer another method of more effectively interacting with their consumer, and the manufacturer another way of interacting with their brands or having their brands interact with the consumer and being able to offer them perhaps more promotions or more targeted information to help them make a more informed choice at the point of sale. Okay, so that's uh, all I have for you today. I have with me today though, um, Ricardo, who in his former role at Coca-Cola worked very closely with, with us and many of the markets around the world on implementing this technology. Um, he'll be happy to answer any questions you may have if uh, they're specific or anything that you want to know specifically about Coca-Cola's work in this space. Great, thank you so much. Um, I actually have, have one question for you, or I guess just a thought. So you've talked a lot about you know, doing things out of home with image recognition, but have you ever um, attempted or done anything in home? Like for example, as a manufacturer, I'd be dying to know exactly what's in someone's refrigerator or what's in their cupboard. And mm -hmm. have you used image, image recognition to help with that? Um, we've not actually done that yet on a, on a wide scale. We've looked at that a little bit. Um, Obviously, one of the limitations that you have in a fridge, you'll have many different kinds of products. So it's one thing to track branded uh, products. It's another thing to look at you know, eggs or fresh produce or, or something like that. So it's certainly something that we're, we're starting to explore, but I would say that's still at a very early stage uh, in terms of where we're at with it. Cool. Um, other questions from the audience here today? Wow, we got one right here. Um, in, on the Coke example, it seems like kind of the focus was compliance, shelf compliance. I guess I'm just kind of wondering, you, you could take a lot of that image data, aggregate that, do a lot of analysis, kind of append sales data. I'm thinking about like a, a conjoint simulator type of exercise to be able to then look at a store level, what, what are their shelf inputs, and then kind of spit out, here's the ideal shelf for you, here's, here's the ideal product mix, and you can layer on a lot of regional mm -hmm. and other data as well. I guess I'm just wondering, have you gone to that level, or is it more kind of compliance based at this point? No, absolutely, and I think um, obviously the work that, uh, that's been done in that area contains a lot of proprietary information, so it was a bit difficult to share today, but that's really, if you will, the holy grail of this space. Um, so being able, in stores where we have actual sales data, being able to compare that with what was available on the shelf. Um, I mean, I know that this is a little different than some of the other things we've been talking about today, but one of the things that you typically have when you're looking at a return on investment of product placement is we understand as a manufacturer, perhaps, what I've sold to the, cons to the customer or the retail outlet, and I know the sellout, but I don't actually know what happened in between those two points. I don't know if my products were placed the way I wanted them to be, if, you know, what was the, what was the category looking like in that particular outlet. So having the ability to tie together what happened in the store with the sales and then look at that on a wide scale, but then also still have the granularity of data. So we can do some high level modeling of that, but also look at an individual store and know what the results looked like in that particular outlet in a way which becomes actionable so we can have corrective action that's, that's surgical as, a, as opposed to sort of a, a blanket approach.